Cardinals baseball. And tonight from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, it's game number two, the Colorado Rockies and the St. Louis Cardinals. Mike Leak signing some autographs as we flash back to the Cardinals leadoff man, Matt Carpenter. Against tonight's starter of the Rockies, it's Arkea in the driver's seat. Chris Russin, the starter, gave up a couple of home runs to Matt Carpenter last time we saw them here at Bush Stadium. And with Jim Hayes and Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us as we get you set for baseball. And it's Adam Wainwright trying to get on track again here tonight. Well, Adam has won three straight games, Dan, but he wasn't very good his last time out. The offense gave him a lot of support. Wainwright has to hit that next level, and he's going to be facing a very tough Rockies lineup, especially one through four. Yeah, and in that uh, top four, it features one of the best shortstops, at least so far this season. It's our Budweiser What's On Tap. And that is Trevor's story. Meanwhile, on the other side, another rookie making a name for himself for the Cardinals, Alenmis Diaz, and he's in the lineup tonight. Story, Diaz, Rockies, Cardinals, baseball comes your way next.
career starts together. Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina. That's number two all-time in Cardinals history. Number one, Tim McCarver and Bob Gibson. Adam Wainwright will try to shut down the power of Nolan Arenado. Kubota power stats. He leads the National League in home runs with 13. Cespedes of the Mets with 12. Five players tied with 11. It's Adam Wainwright. It's the St. Louis Cardinals. It's a big crowd. Baseball comes your way next. Adam Wainwright. Baseball brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. By Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Beautiful night for baseball. Much warmer tonight as opposed to game number one along with Jim Hayes who can't talk Rick Horton is here he can I'm Dan and I barely can and the scoreboard doesn't seem to be working apparently as we see in that shot we take a look at the Rockies lineup here for game two of this series Charlie Blackman very good offensive performer he's in that leadoff spot followed by Trevor Story and Nolan Arenado. Gonzalez, Reynolds, and Parra in the middle. LeMayhew, who hits the Cardinals well. And Walters and Russin round out the lineup for Colorado. Well, what are you expected to see out of Wainwright here tonight? Well, I want to see the next level, Dan, for Adam Wainwright. Certainly the competitive spirit is back for Adam. He's won his last three games, but the stuff's still not as sharp as he's been in the past. But he's working at it. There's no question he's working at it. And everybody's rooting for Wainwright to be that dominant pitcher again. He just has to find that finishing pitch. Strike one, strike two, not a problem, but finishing guys off is where he's at right now. He's had eight starts against the Rockies. Lowest ERA against any opponent he's faced at least three times. It's 1.56. And his record overall against Colorado is six and one. Here's Charlie Blackman. He'll lead it off. Blackman is hitting 287. Couple of home runs and he's driven in 13. Did have a base hit last night. Shows bunt and there's the cutter taken in high. Heard Blackman talking yesterday that he has one of the best jobs in baseball because he's hitting in front of a lot of guys with thump. 
so they're going to throw him strikes. Runs very well. Very good leadoff hitter. Two one pitch. That's driven into deep right center field. And this ball is dropped. Grichik had a glove on it. Blackman, as you mentioned, can run and on his way to third with a leadoff triple. Almost a spectacular play by Grichik in right center. When that ball was hit, I didn't think Grichik was going to come close to that ball. He covered some ground in a hurry. There's the speed of Grichik, and he lays out on the track and just can't come up with it. Ball hung up in the air a little bit. We noticed last night. Ball not carrying very well here at Bush Stadium. That's one that he'll probably tell you I should have had. As well as uh, as you mentioned, it, it took him to get there and how hard it was with his speed. Well, he may say that, Dan, but I, I just think the, the the distance that he went to get it, yes, it hit his glove, but he was on the move, getting close to the wall, on the track in a half dive. That was not an easy play. Oh no. And a strike to Trevor's story. He has struck out in every game with the exception of three this year. Second in the majors in strikeouts to Justin Upton. Story with 55. Upton with 62. 10 of the 11 home runs he's hit came in the first month. Infield back for the Cardinals, including the corner positions, conceding the run. Well, play at the plate. Throw is there, the tag is there, the out is there. And Molina, his throwing hand may have been spiked by Charlie Blackman on that play at the plate. He says he's okay, but I saw the same thing you did. Nice play by Carpenter. He was back. But he charges this ball, gets rid of it quickly. There's the tag. Yachty shakes his fingers. Blackman going on contact. He saw that everybody was back and maybe a little too ambitious there. Only man that was in a little bit was Carpenter, and it pays off for the Cardinals. So here is Nolan Arenado. 13 home runs to lead their club. Most in the National League. That's a play that Charlie Blackman would love to take back obviously but that's that's a mistake. You should not be going on that play. Yeah that that was overly ambitious to be making the first out at home plate. You've got to trust Arenado and Gonzalez who follow. That's one of the push pulls of this game Dan it always has been you want aggressiveness. You want energy you want excitement you want emotion but then you don't want too much of all that. Too much aggressiveness you run into outs too much emotion you get out of your game. Here's a one one pitch. Arenado takes a ball in. It was a leadoff triple by Blackman. Story grounding to third, the play at the plate for the first out, and now Nolan Arenado. Rockies come into this game having won five straight. Longest such streak since back in September of 2014 for Colorado. There's your double play ball. Oh my goodness. Air number 10 on Aledmus Diaz. Cardinals defense with Holiday, Grichik, Piscotti in the outfield. Carpenter, Diaz, Wong, and Moss on the infield. And Molina is behind the plate. Around the horn brought to you by Dobbs. Wow, those are just killers. Yeah, it's been an odd half inning already. A ball that I wouldn't say should have been caught, but could have been caught by Grichik in center. Then a error on the base pass by Blackman to try to score. That gives it back to the Cardinals. That gives the advantage back. And now, advantage again 
pass back to the Rockies on a tailor made double play and he should be over and this is what John Moselock was talking about yesterday it's the extra pitches that a pitcher has to throw Wainwright should be in the dugout right now enjoying the fact that he got out of a leadoff triple and put a zero on the board but now he's got more work to do against a very very tough hitter broke it bat hit to Wainwright and Gonzalez is the second out shattered his bat. Take a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal. 42% fastballs from Wainwright. The sinker, you can add that to that. That's really a fastball as well. But the curveball, 30% of the time, that's been his game changer. Not many changeups from Wainwright. Used him more early in his career. But the curveball and the variations of it, a little bit of a cut or two that he uses. And the key for him, Dan, is. We've seen him throw good ones the last few starts, but not only good ones. He's made some mistakes with them. Here is Mark Reynolds. First pitch is hit out of play. Reynolds with a couple of home runs, nine doubles for the Rockies. May a bit surprising, the average at 314. Runners at first and second. And an 0 1 pitch. If there was ever a ballpark where you said, I've got a player that's going to strike out a lot, but he's also going to hit a lot of balls a long way, where would I want to play that guy? I think Colorado is a good, good choice. Perfect match, isn't it? Reynolds with Coors Field. A pickoff to second. Well, what do you, I mean, every fan right now that's watching this game is saying, what is the deal with the Cardinals defense? You know, it's another error. Diaz now up to 10. Wainwright should be in the dugout. Cardinals should be hitting right now. There's a look at Peralta, baseball activities. He started those again, but, you know, if you're Mike Matheny, what do you do? Well, you, you, you work at it, which they've been doing, and you hope for better results, but you can hope. I mean hope is not really a strategy you have to work at it and and they have the couple of days ago we saw the Cardinals in L.A. take a good 40 minutes of extra ground balls and, and everybody that was out there were the guys that were having issues and they were all taking balls in the infield It wasn't an outfield drill infield only so it's you know you work your way out of it you can't think your way out of an offensive slump you can't do that defensively either you just work at it you get more comfortable. But it's clearly an issue. Three and two the count on Reynolds. Inning started with a triple. Story grounded a third. The play at the plate. Arenado reached on the air. Gonzalez is soft liner back to Wainwright. And now the three two pitch. Molina cannot hold on as Reynolds just got a piece. So the extra pitches for Wainwright. That's three, four, five, six, seven. That's that. That's close to an inning. That's an inning he can't pitch in this game, Dan. Right. So runners at first and second. Two outs, and again a three-two. Reynolds lines it into right field, and the catch is made by Piscotti. No score.
Danny Lewis. Chris Russin finishing up his warm up tosses. And it'll be Carpenter, Piscotty, Holiday, then Grichik, Molina, Boss, Diaz, Wong, and Wainwright. Wainwright with four hits this year, all have been extra bases. We talked about Russin in the open in the day that Matt Carpenter had against him, a couple of home runs. He's a former Cub. He is not a hard thrower. He's going to throw 86 to 88 miles an hour. Really a sinker ball pitcher. That's what we're going to see most from him. And he has the fourth best ground ball percentage, actually the fifth best in baseball. He's just behind Jaime Garcia. And we all know what kind of pitcher Garcia is in terms of getting ground balls. Russin. Maybe doesn't have the fastball, but has that mentality. Russin, uh, a former Cub that's been now thrust into the rotation because of injuries. Last start, four runs on 10 hits, five and two thirds against the Diamondbacks. They replaced Jordan Lyles in the rotation and actually was their long man and was very good in that role, but as a starter, he's been roughed up. And pretty predictable for a guy like that, Dan, to have trouble the second or third time through the lineup. And that's what happened in that last outing against the Diamondbacks. He was actually outstanding through four. But then when the guys started to see him a bit, that pretty good Diamondbacks lineup, they hit him a bit better. So we'll look for that here tonight. Last two starts, 11 earned runs in 10 innings. We'll see if that trend continues tonight as Carpenter strikes out. The defense for the Rockies tonight par up Blackman, Gonzalez in the outfield, Arenado, Story, LeMahieu, Reynolds. Walters is behind the plate that's presented by Dobbs. And this is a good defense. The Rockies the fewest errors in the National League and it's not just about making errors it's about your range and arms and and out of range put out of zone plays but as far as errors are concerned the Rockies with only 15 the Cardinals with that error in the first now have 36 slicing towards a line and that ball is down off the bat of Piscotti one out stand up double for the Cardinal right fielder his 11th double this year. My mind as consistent a Cardinal hitter as we've seen this season. You might throw Molina in that too, but Piscotti uses all fields, takes this one the other way. And I'm reminded with Piscotti hitting a double that the post dispatch is honoring the St. Louis area scholar athletes here at the ballpark. Had a chance to visit with them with Matt Bowman prior to the game. Piscotti, of course, one of them as a Stanford grad. Certainly a scholar athlete himself. There's the former Rocky, Matt Holiday. Hitting 248, six home runs. He's driven in 19. Talked about it last night, the great numbers that he's put up in his career against his former team. This is his 40th game against the Rockies. He has 35 driven in against Colorado. Of concern, I think, for the Cardinals right now. And offense has not been the concern. I mean, it's been pretty good from day one. But Holiday's hitting 167 with runners in scoring position. You figure that gets back to where it's been in the past. Last year, he had 408 at the uh, average of runners in scoring position. He was tremendous. The 0 2. Nice play by the Rockies catcher to keep that in front. Dan, if you focus on the offensive side for the Cardinals, I think when it's all said and done, Carpenter's going to be what we think he's going to be. Holiday's going to be what we think he's going to be. And I think we can say that about Piscotti, too. He's such a good hitter in terms of adjustments. I think the key guys to get going and keep going are Randall Gritchick and Colton Wong in this lineup. The one two pitch to Holiday. Hit to short. Oh, it comes up and hits Story. Looked to be a terrible hop, and he may have taken that off the chin.
appears to be a little dazed. He's fielded this ball right in the area of the sun as well. And the ball kicks up, hits off his face and his hat. And may have been some sun involved, but I think there's some stars involved right now for Trevor Story. Makes me think of the, uh, the early start that we have tomorrow, 6-15. And usually with those starts, it becomes a very tough sun field and right. But this is the shortstop here. It was a hard hit ball, too, by Holiday. Definitely a sun issue right where he was standing, right where he fielded that ball. And it's hard to imagine a player losing the ball in the sun, but it wouldn't be the first time. Think about a guy like Story, too, and we talked about the few errors that the Rockies have made. That's now 16 for them. But Trevor Story is learning all of the fields in baseball. That's one of the things that a rookie has to deal with is all of the backgrounds, the noises, the, I mean, yeah, the bases are all the same, but the field's a little different. And now it's Grichik with runners at first and third. The shift is on for the Cardinal center fielder. Ball one. One ball, one strike on Grichik. Average at 223. Five home runs. He is driven at 19. We're just underway here in St. Louis. No score. Fouled back. And a nice play made by a fan right by us. A short lead at first by Holiday. Piscotti a runner at third. In the dirt and again Walters keeps that in front. So two balls and two strikes. Jeremy Hazelbaker made the start last night in game one of this series. Gritchett came off the bench and delivered with a pinch hit base hit. The Cardinals pinch hitters hitting just above 360. Inside. Well you mentioned the lack of errors by the Rockies it's also been a lack of walks this year they have issued the ninth fewest Colorado last year gave up the most walks in all of baseball second most two years ago so the combination of good defense lack of walks means you're playing winning baseball this year bases are loaded. Well, once we get four innings in the books with Molina on defense, in the fifth, he will pass Ted Simmons for the most innings caught in Cardinals franchise history. What a milestone that will be. You bet. Right now, he's worried about the first inning. Base is loaded. And the first pitch taken for a ball. We've had a very interesting first inning, haven't we? Yeah. A lot of different things going on. Got an error on each team. You've got the walk to Russin, which certainly might hurt him, and Molina, who's been so good, 331 on the season at the plate. I'm not sure right now there's a guy you want up there any more than Yadier Molina. Well, you said it earlier, the two most consistent guys in this lineup, and probably could add a third if 
you want to include a lead Miss Diaz but it's been Piscotti Molina and Diaz well, Diaz has his own list <laughs> I wouldn't even call him consistent I would just say he's got he's on the unbelievable list hard to believe incredible how is this happening list he's on page one been a fun year for him. 1 1 pitch. Molina. Arenado, what a play. From his knees, they'll turn the double play. My goodness. An incredible play by Nolan Arenado. Takes a hit and maybe two runs away, but an incredible play from the Rockies' third baseman. This guy is something special. And the turn by D.J. LeMayhew, and Molina couldn't believe it. Play to Rob Yadier Molina moments ago. Well, you said yesterday that people are talking about Aaron Otto as one of the best fielding third basemen they've ever seen, which is a pretty tall thing to say, and maybe this is why they're saying he lays out and he knows he's got time to make a strong throw, which he did to LeMayhew. The turn was good. You mentioned that as well, and we saw just about everything in that first inning, didn't we? Yeah. Couple of errors, bases loaded, a walk. So a double and a terrific play by Arenado. Here's Parra who's at the plate. He has 14 doubles this year. 303 average. He's popped three home runs. He's driven in 20. Between innings we had a nice tribute to a Navy vet Virgil Vanduhar who's here at the ballpark today celebrating his 90th birthday served in the South Pacific Pacific and 44 and 45 so happy birthday glad you're with us today and thanks for your service Dick Buckman is a big Cardinals fan and watching resting comfortably tonight and we want to see him back at the ballpark very very soon that's Dick Buckman one two pitch and a strikeout for Adam Wainwright. First strikeout for number 50 as we turn to our Toyota key to the game. Well, that was fortuitous for him to get a strikeout leading into the key to the game is for Adam to get to that next level. Talked about it a bit in the open but Adam has won his last three starts and you hope that that's a foundation for him to build on and I think he's that kind of pitcher. Get some positive things going forward now build to get better. He is always about getting better. And one of the reasons why he's become one of the elite pitchers in the game. He wants to get back to that. Not there right now, but he certainly has the heart to get back to that. Strikeouts this year for Wainwright have been way down. 
and opponents came in hitting 330 against him. That is very unlike Adam Wainwright. Third in the National League as far as hits allowed. Number one, Zach Greinke. That's very unlike Mr. Greinke. Here's a 1 1 pitch. 1 and 2. Think about that for Yadier Molina. 12,335 innings behind home plate. Average 15 or 16 pitches an inning. My knees are getting sore just thinking about it. <laughs> right. It's incredible. And to do it in the heat of St. Louis. And it makes even I think what Ted Simmons did even maybe more incredible the heat of the AstroTurf. Just remarkable 185,000 pitches for those of you scoring at home. <laughs> Roughly. That's probably on the low end. That's probably right. You said and 15 of an inning. I'm going to say that the average probably has been closer to maybe 18. Maybe. Give or take a few. A couple hundred thousand probably and we're not talking between innings and spring training and right. bullpens and. It's a lot of work. Well and done. a strikeout for Adam Wainwright back to back case to start this second inning. Well this has the Wainwright break but it's on the inner half it's not really where he wants it and. He got away with it because he froze LeMahieu who didn't believe it was a strike. It was. But that was not the best of Wainwright curveballs it just. Worked. I think the other thing that you have to consider too with Molina, let's give him a lot of credit for the kind of shape that he has gotten his body in. Looks like a different player from yes. when he first came up. Absolutely. And he's talked about the weight loss, and the reason to do that is so that he could stay behind the plate and advance his career behind the plate. So he deserves all the credit in the world. There's Tony Walters the catcher. Dan there's a. Old school understanding of what a baseball player does and how fit they are that that is so different than the way it is today. The, the assumption would be. That well it's not like you're a football player or a basketball player you're not working out the same way a boxer well these guys do it's incredible what they do. Weight wise and. To take care of their body, the, the their percentage body fat is low. Every team's got a trainer, a weight guy, and that's a strong guy in center field that puts away Walters. So a good inning for Wainwright. A couple of strikeouts.
MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment with any game. One app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Brandon Moss to let Miss Diaz and Colton Wong for the Cardinals. Moss has hit the uh, Rockies pretty well in his career. 400 average with four home runs. He's driven in 12. It's the start over Adams tonight. Yeah, we, we were talking, Rick, before the game about this bullpen. Yeah. That the Rockies have. And you start thinking about late inning matchups potentially and trying to get Adams in a game and where the damage might be done. Their two lefties are about as good as anybody right now. Little squibber that Arenado fires a strike to first on. My goodness. I'd love to see the gun on that throw. It looks like they've got a reliever playing third base. Yeah. Well, we're not going to do Arenado's pitch arsenal, but we are going to talk about <laughs> Russin. As you can see, you can do the math. That's 71% fastballs with the fastball and a sinker, and 11% curveballs, a changeup. Again, he's looking for ground balls like the one he just got. Here's a lead miss, Diaz. I like Wainwright so far. Good start. His cutter shattered the bat of Gonzalez. Yes. Curveball's been good. Diaz. Aaron Nato, he's try, putting on a show. Try somebody different. That guy right there is worth the price of admission. Just to see play defense. On the offensive side, Arenado is leading the National League in runs scored. Home runs, second in RBIs. And he looks pretty good with the glove. Whew. That's an understatement. Here's Colden Wong. That's already three plays, one ranging to his left to start the double play. Showing off the arm of the ball that was hit by Moss. And then textbook, and now you would start with your glove low, come to the baseball yes. with that short yeah. off. Very smooth, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't stabbing at it. Glove was out in front of him. He was under control with his bottom half. He wasn't falling over. Very good base. Fielding has a lot to do with footwork more than you think. It's hands, but it's footwork too. If you're not in the proper position, your hands can't always make up for that. Three and two on Colton Wong. I must say I'm a little spoiled. I missed the scoreboard. Me too. I like to cheat off of that. I, I'm not sure who we're playing. <laughs> Lemayhew makes the play. No score. What's happening?
by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. And by the Missouri Tobacco Quit Line, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Beautiful night here in St. Louis. And wherever you may be, we hope you're enjoying St. Louis Cardinals baseball and the Nolan Arenado Show. It'll be Russin, the Blackman, and Story. It's been an interesting year, to say the least, for Adam Wainwright. Think about his last four starts. He is 3 and 0 despite an ERA of six and a half. But that's baseball. It is. He had a lot of run support the last time out, especially. But starting to get that competitive fire back in his eye. And I think that'll come with him being more aggressive with his fastball, too. I tend to always talk about his breaking ball, but I think the fastball establishes everything. If he can. Pound more first pitch strikes with the fastball opens everything else up. Hit the other way, and there is Holiday. We played 11 plus innings now in this series, each team with one extra base hit. That's it. And you're talking about two power teams. Rockies have won five straight. Derek Lilliquist will be watching intently every little thing Mr. Wainwright does tonight. No extra base hits last night. Zero. And tonight we've seen a triple and a double. The triple was by Blackman off the glove of Randall Gritchick in right center field to start our night. Carpenter playing in at third outfield shading Blackman to pull. Look at the early months last year Dan some of the cooler months that we had and all of the warning track fly balls and the conversation was about the Cardinals are just not a power team and their comments were well the ball's not carrying very well here and, and I think that was true and it's true that it hasn't been the last two days. There's a base hit slap the other way. Certainly last night. Yes. Location appeared to be up. That's a curveball. And that's up. It's about belt high. Here's a look at Carlos Martinez. Johnny Peralta there. That's ripped into center field. Blackman stops at second base. Story is one for two. Our BJC Healthcare difference maker is tonight's starter, Adam Wainwright, for the Cardinals. And talked about it earlier very good numbers against the Rockies. And his best numbers against any team in baseball 1.45 ERA. And that's not just a couple of starts. That's eight games, 12 or 12 games, eight starts, seven and one record. You wouldn't think anybody would have their best performance against a team being the Colorado Rockies. You just wouldn't think that. Colorado, typically a place where runs are scored quite often. And a breaking ball to Nolan Arenado. It's an error on Aledmis Diaz, allowing Arenado to reach back in the first, but no damage done. I'm sure Aledmis would like another shot. To give Diaz some credit, and yes, the errors are piling up. Yes, the offense is piling up. But many people commented to me, and I did 
was not in the clubhouse when he did his post game interviews after a rough day that he had defensively. Many people commented on how perfect he was at standing up and facing questions and being honest and being direct about the game. No excuses. He was really could not have been better. I heard that from many many people and, and that's that's just great to see. I mean you're going to have a bad day. You're going to have good days and you, you, you face the applause when you have a good day. You have to face the music when you don't. Life in the big leagues. Exactly. 2 1 pitch. Foul just below us. Well, let's get you caught up on the defense of Nolan Arenado. 5 4 3 double play. Also showed off his arm on a ball hit off the bat of Brandon Moss. And there's the glove and the good form you were talking about. Very smooth. Two balls and two strikes. That's it out of play. Good quality pitch at 93 miles an hour from Wainwright. It had a little extra hop to it, was well placed. That was a vintage Adam Wainwright delivery right there. It's just a foul ball. It's a big deal, but I like the way he attacked the zone with the fastball and the way he hit his spot. The 2 2. Arenado hits a breaking ball foul. So I guess when you see the lack of strikeouts, Rick, and the high percentage in terms of the average against him with the balls in play, you know, is Wainwright getting closer to having that put away pitch that we've seen in years past? Well, I, I'd say closer, yes. I think there's a few more steps up that ladder. The 2 2. Arenado, he's only struck out 16 times this year. A count of three balls, two strikes with one out. See if they want to do some running. They do not, and it's fouled back. Another pretty good fastball from Wainwright. Arenado does not strike out very much. So that gives you a little bit more confidence in running on the pitch. Blackman runs well. Story runs well. Now Molina wants to talk it over with Adam make sure they're on the same page here and the entire infield comes in. Pretty quick team meeting there. <laughs> Let's go. It's another 3 2 from Adam Wainwright. Runners go. Pitch is hit into center field. And a chance for a double play here. Grichik with the catch, the throw, and not in time. The stretch by Diaz. Both runners had to scamper back. And Blackman saw that it was in the air, so he was able to make. The adjustment quickly enough to get back to the bag just in time. One more step towards third. Stu Cole doesn't get him to stop. He doesn't stop himself. One more step towards third. He's out. So now here is Cargo with two outs and two on. It is soft liner back to Wainwright. Make a case that was his best cutter of the night in on his hands. Yes. Shattered the bat.
Pitch count already at 51. Got him out in front and a pop up into shallow center. Good work by Wainwright with runners on tonight. He's come away unscathed. Midway through three and there's no score. To hit for the cycle prior to that, 20 years ago, John Mabry, May 18th of 1996 at Colorado. Asked Mabes at the cage today if he realized it's the 20-year anniversary of that day, and he said, "Yeah, someone had mentioned that to me." I said, "Well, what stood out about it?" He said, "We lost the game. That's what I remember." He said, "I remember the weather really changing late in that game." He said, "I still have the baseball from that night." He said there is a particular piece of that night that is at the Hall of Fame. He couldn't recall which one, if it's a jersey or cleats or batting gloves. But uh, that special night, night. Yeah. was the natural cycle, correct? Natural cycle for John Mabry. Meaning got him in, a, in order. Single, double, triple home run. That's even rarer. I was working the game when Grud Zelanek had his. Was sitting in the bullpen when Willie McGee had his. McGee's cycle came against the Cubs in a game where Ryan Sandberg hit two home runs. The Bruce Suter game. The Bruce Suter game. Willie McGee was the star of the game, kind of. He was named by NBC the Saturday afternoon game as the star of the game, which was a big deal at the time. Only game in town, and when you think about what you could watch on TV back in those days, so Bob Costas was calling the game. He used to call it the game of the world. <laughs> that was it, game of the world. Mark Redzelonix came in a day game at Bush Stadium 2 against Milwaukee. Here's a 1 2. Wayne Wright, a ground ball that's hit to Trevor's story. One away. Kick off your summer with a drink that kicks your taste buds. The bold, refreshing, frozen strawberry lemonade. It's back and it's only available at McDonald's. You think the players know? I'm, I'm sure they know. But just because the scoreboard's out doesn't mean they can't score, right? You still are allowed to play to run. It's in the rule book. Let's do it right here. How about Carpenter quietly up to yes. eight home runs. Struck out swinging first time up. I think that's going to be really interesting as this summer goes along. 
let's just say the numbers stay where they're at you right you know probably don't do much to your lineup if some things change and Peralta comes back and he's in your lineup where does Carpenter go potentially where does Diaz go what about the adjustments in your lineup all those things at this point are on the table I think Peralta could be a game changer as far as how you defend and how you set your lineup Tommy Pham could be eventually if he can stay healthy I just think he's got a big upside and you know interestingly there's not a lot of young guys that are, I think are are ready right now at Triple A. You know the Piscottis that we've had in the past and Oscar Tavares before that a guy that you think well in June he's going to be your guy I don't know who that is right now other than the guys that are on the DL. Carpenter hits it out of play. Now one player that will be up at some point. You would think. I know who you're thinking. Alex Reyes. We commented on it last night. John Moselak was asked do you like the stuff of Alex Reyes and he said how do you not like 101. That was his answer and. Having seen him throw bullpens and saw him throw a couple of innings. In a minor league game this spring, he's a he's got it. He's got the stuff. He just has to pull it all together, keep it together. But there's nothing he lacks in terms of ability. Talking with some of those at around the Cardinals minor league system, they say he is the best pitching prospect, maybe the best in the last 20 years. But right there with Ricky and Keel. That's who I would have said. I remember when Ricky and Keel first came up and we were doing the game in Montreal when he made his debut. He watched that guy and, and the crowds were small in Montreal and you could hear the, the sizzle of the baseball out of the hand. Literally you could hear it from Ricky and Keel when he broke off a curveball or let it rip with a fastball. It was well, unbelievable. Most, most call, call, uh, Cardinal fans when they see their team playing Colorado one of the first things you think of is Rick and and the throws that he made from center field. So an exciting player as a pitcher. But I would say equally exciting as a as a player. The two best outfield throws I've ever seen. In person. It was unbelievable. The response of his teammates and their reaction in the dugout is priceless. They gave him the ball. Nobody does. Nobody does that. It was spontaneous. It was Troy Gloss that did that. Who Troy Gloss the, was at the, third base. Made the tag at third, and as Ankiel comes in, he hands him the ball like you earned this. I, I I don't know what that means, but put it on your mantle somewhere. I hope he did. I bet he didn't. We'll have to ask him. I th I bet he did. He kept a few of the special moments that he had in St. Louis, like those baseballs. Omar Quintanilla was the runner or the batter at that time. Base hit out to left. And Piscotti is two for two. I also remember our guest last night, Chris Duncan, and his reaction. He was in the dugout. So here is Ricky and Keel, May 6th of 2008. Lost just, yep, there it is, right on the bag. And this was the one that is the most ridiculous throw I've ever seen. It's a longer throw. Oh my. Just as much right on the money. And the boyish smiling face of Ann Keel. There's the baseball. Where is that ball now? Unbelievable. Here is Matt Holiday. Can I say boyish in a in a complimentary way about how Rick played this game and I think that's why pitching became the wrong thing for him it wasn't fun anymore it was too difficult for him to overcome where he'd gotten to as far as pitching was concerned he wanted to have fun being a baseball player yeah again. what a miserable experience he went through too. 
trying to get back as a pitcher. And then the ultimate to come back and hit a home run. First game back in the big leagues. I asked him about that down in Florida during uh, spring training. And he said I wish I could bottle up that feeling I had that night and give it to every person mm. in the world. He said it feels that good. It's the most incredible experience he said he's ever had in his career in his life. Holiday rips it fair inside the third baseline. One run is in. Here comes another. Relay to the plate is not in time. Holiday drives in two. And the Cardinals have the lead here in the third. Holiday breaks an 0 for 15 and comes through. You talk about Holiday coming through with runners in scoring position a year ago at such a high rate. He responds right here by doing it. Ball down in the zone, just inside the bag. Even Arenado is not going to catch that one. And into the corner. I'm not so sure the catcher wasn't blocking the plate on that second run that ended up being a close play at the plate. I'm wondering whether that would have been reviewed had Piscotty been called out. Not the same thing. Here's Randall Gritchick. And Gritchick sends one high in the air. Into left center field. Blackman is there to make the catch. Holiday will tag up from second to third. There's Walters, the catcher. And the throw coming in, and he's in front of home plate without the ball. He'd been there for some time. He's standing right in front of the of home plate I think there would have been an issue just barely safe. I don't think you can do what he just did. I mean you can do it. But the runner safe. There's Johnny Molina. He didn't do a five four three double plays first time up. Here's where you want to get greedy. Two outs, runners in scoring position. The Cardinals have the most runs scored in this spot. Big reason why. Yadier Molina. He just doesn't strike out, makes himself a very tough out in these spots. Big gap in left center field. And a fly ball lifted down the right field line. Gonzalez over, and it's out of play. Well, you said the gap was in left center. That pitch on the inner half. Yachty's trying to hit the right center. I think he's comfortable hitting the ball the other way most of the time, even on a ball in. Inside out swing. Molina serves it into shallow right field. Blackman on the run and makes the catch. Holiday drives in two and drives in an early lead for the Cardinals.
proud to support the annual Jim Butler Charity Golf Classic June 20th benefiting the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater St. Louis. If you'd like to participate just head to bgcstl.org slash golf. Holiday with a pair of RBIs and now his total is up to 21. Wainwright will face Reynolds, Parra, and LeMayhew. First pitch is a strike. Ground ball that's pulled fair past Carpenter inside the third base line and down into the corner. And Mark Reynolds has his 10th double of the season. Check out the location on Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. Dropped down a little bit. Looked like Wainwright trying to get that ball down and in. It was down and in. It just barely kept fair past the diving Matt Carpenter. Good at bat for Reynolds. And here is Parra who's bounced around a little bit in his career. You like him don't you. Always have. Good player. Saw him with Milwaukee and Arizona Baltimore a year ago. Good outfielder good arm runs well former gold glover could play all three outfield spots. I thought the Cardinals may make a run at him because of his versatility and the uncertainty that they had going into the season. And I, I say uncertainty. I mean, you know, Holiday's going to be in left for the most part, but Grichik, you're still finding out is he an everyday center fielder? And you weren't sure about Biscotti. And you didn't even know who Hazel Baker was. Right. So it just gave you some flexibility. Or most didn't. Both he and Carlos Gonzalez are from Venezuela, and that was also part of the factor of bringing him into Colorado. Those two had played Little League uh, together and also winter ball. So why not join each other in the major leagues? And that's what they've done. Oh, and two the count on Parra. Struck out swinging back in the second. And he strikes out here. So Wainwright is struck out three tonight. See the determination on Adams face trying to get into shutdown mode. Team gave him a couple of runs doesn't want to give anything back. And lo and behold we have a scoreboard functioning. By the way it seems like it's lit up the field a little bit too. I would agree. Brighten it up here at the ballpark. Scoreboard back well, working th again. There's no question it has. Yeah. LeMahieu is called out on strikes back at the second inning. It has from our vantage point I'm I'm curious if it if the players would say the same thing if there was any issues as far as seeing the ball at the plate hitting background all of that because that you would think would affect the hitting back sure. Here's a one one pitch. Bounced up the middle. There's Colton Wong. And there's two away. I'm reminded of playing winter ball in the Dominican Republic years ago and the norm for the Dominican Republic in a winter league game is to not turn the lights on until after batting practice is over you would hit without the lights on in the outfield area because of the expense involved so you would be shagging balls during batting practice with only lights on the infield you're shagging balls almost in the dark <laughs> until Save a few bucks until game time. I'm curious so I, I bet we'll hear from the players after the game or tomorrow during BP and they'll say yeah it felt like a different look 
as a hitter. And Wainwright again has a chance to pitch around trouble here in the fourth inning. And he's done a very nice job of that here tonight. You talked about it last night, Walt Weiss, Mike Matheny making the jump from coaching amateur players to now in the big leagues. I'd be curious for both of them what they think has been the hardest part of that transition. Yeah. Media maybe the, the time. How much they're pulled away from family life whatever the case may be. I'm sure there'll be. A lot of reasons that have been difficult but there'll be an awful lot of reasons. For things on the positive side of that ledger too about. The joy of of the competition and being in uniform again and, and you know when you have it in your blood as a player there's something about the competition sure. that draws you. On three and oh a ground ball that's hit to short there's Diaz. And Yadier Molina. Is now tied with Ted Simmons. For the most innings caught in St. Louis Cardinals history. Congratulations to Yadi. Cardinal scores six any size drink is just 50 cents the next day coffee fountain frozen drinks when they score you pour it your nearest on the run you earned it. Here's Brandon Moss followed by Diaz and Wong. One or rather twelve thousand three hundred and thirty five innings now for Yadier Molina to match Ted Simmons. Most innings caught in Cardinals history. Moss his first time up. A little squibber to Nolan Arenado and he showed off his arm. Who would have thought back in 2004 when Yadier Molina came up that we'd be talking about this in 2016. I know one guy who thought that Dave Ricketts. I remember the day when Dave Ricketts first told me about Yadier Molina as a minor league catcher and how good he was. Been working with him every day at it had to be 5:30 or 6 in the morning. He would get the catchers out early to work with on blocking balls and said, "There's this guy. Where do you see this guy? He is unbelievable." And 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 Dave, who was a dear friend, you know, he wouldn't he threw around comp compliments like manhole covers. I mean, he was sure. not going to give you give too much credit. And yet he loved what he saw from the work ethic of Molina, the skills, and he identified that early. And I, I never forget that day, the first time I saw Yachty, just a young kid with a love for the game of baseball, and he has blossomed. 
He is at the ballpark in spring training by about 515 530 every day. I mean. You know, people talk about the Cardinal way and. Well they're they're so lucky with all their drafts and. Well there's a couple of pillars of this organization that set the tone. For a lot of the players. And one of them is Yadier Molina. Strike out of Brandon Moss. I mean, when you see that guy showing up and doing the things that he does that early, it sets the tone for everybody else. Pretty good pitch here. Catches Moss outside corner. He had been working him in, then he paints away. I would love to poll, and I don't know that you could ever possibly get the true answer, the right answer, the average time that the all star best player on the team <laughs> shows up at spring training every day. But I think Yachty wins. And I would guess there's a lot of star players that get there. They don't have to. They get there when they need to, you know, when they want to get there. But for Yachty, different story. Put it this way it's no coincidence that last 10 or 15 years, the best players have been Molina, Wainwright, Chris Carpenter, Matt Carpenter, Matt Holiday, and they're all the guys that you see there. Non-stop putting the work in in the weight room, the batting cage. But that's a cultural thing with the Cardinals it, that, it I, is. that I don't think is culturally true in every organization. Totally agree. And that's what I mean. They set the tone for what is the quote unquote Cardinals way. There's a base hit in the right for Let Miss Diaz. You know, if somebody came up and said, well, here's a book called The Rockies Way, it'd be very similar to The Cardinals Way. But you have to have certain guys that lead yeah. by example. Yeah. And you got to have talent. The Cardinals certainly have had that over the years. One out base hit for Diaz and now Colton Wong. I think people get confused about the Cardinals way they assume that it's some mystical crazy thing other than just this is how we're going to play and this is how we're going to prepare and this is how we're going to promote players and this is how we're going to teach the game and it's nothing if you're a baseball guy there's nothing as you mentioned it's extraordinary in that and a base hit into right field hustling towards third is Diaz. Throw back to the bag at first and Wong is in safely. Boy, you love a lead Miss Diaz going first to third. Especially when you've got a pitcher coming to the plate that swings the bat pretty well. You get to third base with one out, and he also had to sidestep the ball first. There's a guy intent on going first to third. Pretty close play there, too. Isn't that the sign, too, of a young player being aggressive there like Diaz? Some of those younger players wouldn't do that, especially with the arm of Carlos Gonzalez. I'd love to see that, first to third. And he's aware of the outfielder's arms here. You know, Parra's got a good one. You know, Gonzalez has an exceptional one. But in my mind you get a base hit to right field you ought to be able to go first to third as deep as outfielders have to play now because of the power of hitters you ought to be able to go first to third most of the time one out runners at the corners Wainwright grounded out to short his first time up again I say you ought to be able to do it but it's complicated by him having to Weight on that ball getting past him, but he had no second thoughts at all. Really a good throw, strong throw from Gonzalez. Wainwright on the first pitch, fouls it back in almost into our booth. Almost. Now what we need is when Ozzy was doing games, we need that 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 big net. He had the fishing net. He I do remember that. Like Ozzy needed a net. With his range, 
even in the booth. Well, you haven't worked with Edmonds yet that has decided that I'm truly retired, which means I don't catch I don't, anything. Well, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that little display. I said, wait a minute, Jimmy, eight gold gloves. It's enough. Probably Come doesn't on. have any more room for more. Save me. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Adam Wainwright. Showing bunt gets it down. Play at the plate, and Diaz is out. Took a long time for that to develop. I think that was just a slow break by Diaz because Wainwright really did a nice job with that bunt. I believe that was. If it was a squeeze, it could have been a squeeze or a safety squeeze, but either way, Diaz got a slow jump on that because Wainwright's bunt was really perfect. He needs to be going already. Yeah. That's that's a that's a slow jump. Good play by the first baseman, flipping the ball with his glove. That's Reynolds. But Wayno could not have bunted that any better. The suicide squeeze, you just go the minute the pitcher starts to go. The safety squeeze, you take longer steps towards home, and then once the bun is down, then you take off. So runners at first and second with two outs. And the shift on here for Carpenter. Carpenter walked and scored on the double by Holiday back in the third and struck out swinging in the first. So two outs, two on. And a strike to Carpenter. Throw down to second, and Wong is back in safely. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Carpenter. Taken high. Really was an odd play there with the lead Miss Diaz and how that all came about. And again, just a late break. And as you said, the bunt was down. And usually in that kind of play, bunt is down. If it's in fair territory, that's a run. The bunt's usually the hard part. Making sure you get it down. He got a change up. So fortunate pitch to be able to bunt that was a lucky thing just didn't work out. Wong is running towards third and safe. A risky play by Colton Wong and it pays off as he picks up his third steal. Well you have a shift here but you do have a left handed bat so Wong said I'm going to go for it. That was a bang bang play. I think that it's got to be a, a wild pitch or you think they'll give him a steal on that. There's the close play at third but I think he just took off when he saw the ball in the dirt and was thinking it would get away further from the catcher Walter. Well, that's either, a risky either play. way it's risky. But let's just be happy about it Dan because there's the ball it's in the dirt and he saw it in the dirt but it was perfectly handled by the catcher. Oh never 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 a doubt Dan never a doubt. And the Rockies took their time now to face Carpenter to take a look at that with review and replay. So the 2 2 pitch taken low. Never make the first to the third out at third base, Horton. It's in the Cardinal way. It's in the Cardinal way. Well, but he didn't. Barely. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
I think there's an addendum to that. Never almost make the first or third, <laughs> third out. But third if base. you do not get thrown out, dot, 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 we like it. It's like the guy shooting a three-pointer while his coach is yelling at him until it goes in. <laughs> he says, nice shot. No, no, no. Great play. <laughs> Here's a 3 2 pitch to Carpenter with Piscotti on deck. And he strikes out. Strikes out for the second time tonight. And the Cardinals waste a golden opportunity to add to their two run lead. It's 2 nothing as we move to the fifth here in St. Louis. And along with Rick Horton and Jim Hayes, I'm Dan McLaughlin. The Washington Nationals started play with a half game lead over New York and the Philadelphia Phillies. Think about that. Mm. That's the difference pitching can Absolutely. mean to a ball club. They Phillies found can some, pitch. They found some good young arms. And they're all developing at the right time. All very young. I think it's really the next level for the Cardinals too, Dan, to, to go on a streak, which I think certainly can happen, but it needs to be led by the starting pitcher. Wainwright included. And this will be Moss that comes in to make the catch. So Russin is over two and we're back to the top of the lineup. Yeah, he has been busy tonight. Yeah a couple of plays at the plate this came in the first inning Blackman. Trying to score with nobody out and here's a safety squeeze that had a late jump from Diaz. And well played by Mark Reynolds. Here's Charlie Blackman who is two for two with a triple. And also a single to left. I like to see motion on the bases even when you're occasionally out doing it. Even Blackman doing that in the first inning or Diaz thrown out at home. You know sometimes you're trying to force the other team into making an error. It's like stealing a base. You're not going to be successful 100 percent of the time. But you're trying to create motion. You're trying to create energy for your team offensively. And occasionally they're going to throw that ball away and you're going to have a big inning as a result of it. Doesn't always happen but I like pushing the envelope a little bit. Two balls and one strike.
3 1 pitch is hit out of play. Wainwright has dealt with runners in scoring position in the first, the third, the fourth. And still the Rockies not on the board. And Blackman fouls it back. Thinking so much about velocity of Wainwright's fastball, but it appears that it has more life tonight. I don't velocity is one thing, but it's jumping more. Coming out of his hand freer, easier, little hop to it, little sink to it. I guess simply said it moves, it's moving more, but hitters can tell the difference. Later swings at, I think on some of these. Yeah. The foul balls that we've seen. Here's a 3 2 pitch to Charlie Blackman. The Cardinals leading 2 to nothing. And he struck him out. There's that late movement that you talked about. A little extra jump to it. Don't miss John Goodman night at the ballpark. That's Thursday, July 6th. Fans purchasing the special theme ticket take home their own exclusive bobblehead honoring this hometown favorite. Get your John Goodman night theme tickets now at cardinals.com slash theme. Dressed as Walter Sobjek. As even the bobblehead has got. The I love it. <laughs> you and I will be doing that game. We're going to have a chance to get him in the booth. I hope so. What would you ask him? What do you want to ask him? I I would only want to ask him big Lebowski questions. I'd also want to ask him. I know he grew up in St. Louis. That is. Favorite players and cardinal memories. You probably want to get more into Roseanne Barr and the great moments that he had in television history with her. Perhaps. I loved him in raising Arizona. Glad you're not sick anymore. Mighty fine cornflakes, Miss McDonough. Wednesday night here in St. Louis. Much nicer weather than we had here last night. A little chilly. John Wright cold. Here's a 
Here's a ground ball off the bat of Steven Piscotti. And he's two for three tonight. Holiday has reached on an air and also doubled in two of the lone runs tonight. And the first pitch is a strike. Russin had a couple of starts with the Chicago Cubs against the Cardinals. It was very good. Put on the Rockies uniform and last year was roughed up by St. Louis. Now time is called. They're in the top of the six and Milwaukee with a lead over the Cubs one nothing. Atlanta wins over Pittsburgh three to one. The post Freddy Gonzalez era. Foul ball almost got the bender. It is back to the uh, field working hard and almost took that. The back of the head. This holiday hits that foul and out of play. Russin with a quick pitch that time of holiday. Done that a couple of times. We've seen Wainwright do that. And a strikeout of Matt Holiday. So Russin strikes out his fourth tonight. Was it a strike? Let's take a look. The Chevy Fox tracks it was called a strike in the upper part of the zone, and that's why, because it was. I'm not sure that's the location he wanted, but it worked. You know, there's some in this game, Dan, that believe that quick pitching is uh, unseemly. Unsportsmanlike, but I think that's part of the deal. I don't know why a pitcher can't go into a longer motion or a shorter motion. I think there's people within the game and outside of the game that that are that question that whether or not it's fair play. Lifted in the air out to deep center field. Blackman is back. Near the wall and just enough room. So Randall Gritchick gave it a ride. He's 0 for 2 with the walk tonight. Wainwright back to the mound when we come back to Bush.
Griffin, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Two to nothing as we move to the sixth here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Well pitched on both sides. Holiday, the double that scored two. We have had some unique interviews over the years. Maybe John Goodman would be kind enough to join us. I think that would be terrific. Meatloaf was in the booth a few years ago with me. Bush Stadium 2 on a Sunday afternoon. What'd you call him? Mr. Loaf. <laughs> and I also said to him, if the Cardinals win this today, <laughs> you know, two out of three ain't bad. It went right <laughs> over his head. I thought, you gotta I be I, kidding me. How can that go over his head? Put it on a tee. You think you'd heard that 10,000 times? At least. I thought he was great in Fight Club. Uh, you haven't seen it, Ricky. Don't worry about I've it. I've seen it. I don't remember Mr. Loaf in it, though. Yeah, he was one of the fighters. Narrows it down. <laughs> Any, I don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> First rule. The 2 1 pitch. Arenado rips it out to left field. And a leadoff base hit. It's an important inning for Adam Wainwright. He has a two run lead, getting later, getting closer to the tide of the bullpen. Adam has not gone more than six innings, but one time, I believe, this season. And you get to a certain part of this game and you're willing to hand it off to the bullpen, but that's not normally in the psyche of Wainwright. You think of him as an eight or nine inning guy every time, but he's still working towards that. Only one time past the sixth inning for Adam Wainwright. Gonzalez hit a soft liner back to Wainwright, also flied out to center. He was here a few years ago down in the clubhouse. Paul Simon was here. And he was touring Major League Stadiums with his son. Now that is somebody I'd love to get up in the booth. You interviewed Nelly. I did. And that's a moment I'm not going to forget. When I think Nelly, I think Rick Hort. <laughs> well, you should. You've seen my oh, iPod. Yeah. I've seen it. That was a treat for me. Here's a 1 1. Fly ball into shallow right center. Late break by Grichik. Makes the catch on the run. Wainwright has pitched very well to Carlos Gonzalez. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets. Fill up at Phillips 66. Eight gallons or more now until September 29th. Receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. What did you like about that pitch to Cargo? Well, he's been off balance. He got him, I think, set up that first at bat. You talked about the cutter in. He jammed him, and ever since then, he's been either out in front or behind. He's just not sure where to go with Wainwright, and that's pitcher's job keep a hitter off balance. Talked last half inning about whether or not it's fair game to quick pitch or not, which Wainwright has done from time to time, which Russin did. I found someone who is on the other side of the aisle to me, and he'll be working on the post game show. He believes that pitchers should not be allowed to quick pitch because they're deceiving the batter. To which I say, 
That's their job. But he gets the last word. He's on the post game. And he has eight gold gloves. One out, two balls, one strike on Mark Reynolds. Doubled inside the third base line, back in the fourth, and also lined out to right. Hit to short, out at second, double play. Six for three on the double play, and Wainwright is through six, and the Cardinals have the lead. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Justin Verlander, 10 strikeouts today against Minnesota, now over 2,000 in his career. Reggie Jackson, happy 70th birthday, and John Lackey going tonight. The Cubs starters collectively have been the best in baseball. T-Mobile, greater coverage of baseball. CC Sabathia of the current players, over 2,500 strikeouts. Bartolo Colon, right around 2,300. Then Felix Hernandez, Jake Peavy. As Yachty hits it out to left, the catch is made. Then Lackey and Verlander. So congratulations to Verlander now with over 2,000 strikeouts. Love that picture, Reggie Jackson. Reminds me of those uniforms that the A's wore back in the 70s. Early to mid 70s, I think. That's a good swing by Molina. Jumps on that first pitch. He'd gotten underneath it a little bit, perhaps home run number one for him. And if remember the the gold Sannies they had? Oh yeah. And the white shoes. That was very cool. How bad were the White Sox uniforms though when they went with those shorts? So glad I didn't have to wear those. Because you were part of the White Sox organization at one point. Fortunately, fortunately it was later than that. The shorts were that's a little bit too innovative that for me. That was a bad look. But the A's look was my high school team's look. The white oh, was shoes. It really? it, yeah. It was cool for the time. For the time. <laughs> Speaking of Oakland, there's Walt Weiss. Tony La Russa used to talk about him. Even when he was in St. Louis, he said, Walt Weiss is going to be a great manager. Mike Gallego could be another one. I think Mark McGuire might be one someday. He would mention that trio all the time. Just another, another quick pitch. Mm -hmm. Two balls and two strikes. Weiss was on the 89 World Series championship team, so he would have been there for the earthquake series. Part of that crazy moment and terrible moment in so many ways in baseball history. Reminder MLB baseball, it's back. Diamondbacks Cardinals in a game you can only see on FS1 then on Fox the return of baseball night in America 
Two of the best teams and rivalries in the game. Cubs battle the Giants. And it all starts Saturday on FS1. And Fox, watch it live, uh, live on Fox Sports Go. Just joining us, a little bit of history tonight with Yadier Molina passing Ted Simmons. All time in innings caught. I say it every year. I just hope more people listen that have those decisions to put Ted Simmons in the Hall of Fame. Yes. It's been good to see Ted around the ballpark more and at more events being a Cardinal Hall of Famer. But there's another step for him. Hard hit ball again off the bat of Diaz. Thinking two. On his way to second and safe as the ball scoots away. Well, does he hit the ball hard or what? He does. And he runs with reckless abandon too. And got himself into scoring position. A better tag, and he might have been out at second, but worth the effort. Ball jumps off his bat. The long strides of Diaz. Close play at second base. I'm going to give you some numbers about Ted Simmons. Decided to really try to break down some of the things that he had done that maybe some don't know about. Diaz would have been out with a clean catch. He had 306 different times. 20 homers five times as a Cardinal. All stars six different times with the Cardinals twice in the American League. Now when you start thinking about durability yeah, that 150 games seven consecutive seasons on the heat of the turf at Bush Stadium two. 1975. Set the single season record for hits as a catcher with 188. Later, that was broken by Jason Kendall. But durable. And at the time of his retirement, here's a guy that had better numbers in certain areas than that of Johnny Bench and some of the switch hitters in the league. You know, if you start taking a look at his numbers in that time period, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Wong breaks his bat, hits it to the right side. He's at the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Will he make it to Cooperstown? And let Miss Diaz stranded at second. An incredible Cardinals package this year it includes overnight accommodations, tickets to a weekend home game, and a personalized Louisville Slugger bat, and a $25 food and beverage credit to Brew House or Red Kitchen and Bar. Book today at 655-1234. Visit stlouisarch.hyatt.com. Just a final thought on Ted Simmons. 
this is what kind of opened up my eyes at the time of his retirement he had 483 doubles the most hit by any catcher in the hall and he held the National League record for home runs by a switch hitter that was at the time of his retirement his batting average by the way is 18 points higher than Johnny Bench's. It's a pretty good case Dan. Love to see it happen someday. He was one of my favorites growing up Simba. Here's Parra two nothing Cardinals here in the top of the seventh and let's give Adam Wainwright some credit here he's pitched well. I would suspect this to be his last inning pitch count wise. He began the inning with 88 pitches disposes of par quickly. He is due up first in the seventh and you know there's some thoughts about this too. I think if you can get Wainwright through seven scoreless if he can finish this inning what a great giant step forward this is for him personally and for the Cardinal rotation. So Segrist normal eighth inning guy getting loose. You hope you don't need him this inning. Wainwright get through this inning. So one step forward for Mr. Wainwright, one giant leap forward for the rotation. You've gone from the big Lebowski to landing on the moon. <laughs> you know, they're kind of similar. Here's a 1 1 pitch in some ways. <laughs> two and two. Be interested to hear what Wainwright says about his stuff today, but I would be surprised if he doesn't say that it's his best fastball that he's had this year. Again, not talking about velocity, but effectiveness with this fastball, getting strikes, having a little movement to it. Ooh, just missed. That is the first walk issued by Adam Wainwright. That was, you know, some of the problems that he's had yes. in his starts, the walks. But, but why do you walk guys? You walk guys because you're searching for your mechanics and you're not getting the right release point. You walk guys because you're not establishing the fastball strike one or hitting corners. You're not commanding your pitches. So the walks happen because the command doesn't happen, and that's what he, I think, will be most proud of no matter what happens the rest of this game it's been a good start for Wainwright Cardinals picked up a double play back of the six that was off the bat of Mark Reynolds and Wayno would love the double play here the last two pitches by the way both could have been called strikes. Pitch number 99 for Adam Wainwright. Get out of play. One one pitch that's tapped foul. So Segrist getting loose and ready just standing on the mound right now just playing. A little catch he's already thrown he's ready to go.
could be a night one way or another you see Trevor Rosenthal. One ball and two strikes. Curveball lifted into left center. That ball will drop. With Blackman coming up, will this be it for Adam Wainwright and go lefty lefty? I would bet that's who Segrist is up for. Blackman. Who is in the on deck circle and the blue pit the other way. Not a good break for Adam Wainwright. Pinch hitter has been announced. Nathini at times wants to gauge what the pitcher is thinking, how confident he might be about facing the next hitter. And he's going to give him that one more hitter. Saw Raybird in this game yesterday. Ryan Raybird is the pinch hitter. He has been very effective. He's five for 13 with a couple of home runs. Sounds like one of the Cardinal pinch hitters. Cardinals have been terrific at that 348 as a team that's well chronicled but the Rockies are close to 300 as a team as well in the pinch. So runners at first and second one out. Rayburn made the start last night in game one and takes a ball outside. So Mike Matheny showing some confidence here in his longtime starter and many times the ace of the staff Adam Wainwright. Pitch number 103 right here. And a fly ball lifted into right. Piscotti makes the catch for out number two. Segrist will come in and face Blackman it looks like you may see a double switch as well. Wainwright's spot is due up first. There's the movement late movement in on the hands of Rayburn good way to finish. And a very very nice start for Adam Wainwright. Now the bullpen our Chevy called to the bullpen. Kevin Segrist bullpen. Your job to finish it off for Mr. Wainwright.
Tied 1-800, quit now. So it's up to Kevin Segris with the Cardinals leading this ball game with a score of two to nothing. Good numbers for Segrist, game number 19. Strikeout walk ratio could hardly be better. 22 punch outs, just three walks, and Segrist really can dominate when he's right. Lefty, righty, doesn't matter. So runners at first and third. Ruben Tejada, by the way, in the game at second base. First pitch taken for a ball outside. Blackman has struck out. He has singled. And he also tripled. You go back to that first inning, one of the key plays in this game. He's at third base, nobody out. And is thrown out by Matt Carpenter on what was basically a routine ground ball hit to third. Another key play that came in the first inning came in the bottom part of the first inning when Nolan Arenado robbed Yadier Molina of a base hit, might have scored two, turned it into a double play. So two zeros on the board in that first inning, but it could have been very, very different. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Charlie Blackman. Instead, he steps out. Isn't every game like that, though, Dan? You think about two or three key moments when you look back that if this would have happened slightly different. This makes me think of Joaquin that favorite famous line of his. You could describe the game in one word and that is you never know. A lot of fastballs. Our Hyundai pitch arsenal for Segrist. Curveball in progress. Changeup outstanding. Here's a 1 2 pitch to Blackman from Segrist. Hit out of play. Noticed here that the velocity of Kevin Segrist has been up a tick or two his last couple of times out. You're seeing now the 95 to 96. Well, it dipped a bit when he didn't feel well, and understandably, Matheny, Mike Matheny told us that he'd lost 12 pounds during that sickness that was going through the team, and you wouldn't expect him to have his normal velocity feeling that way. Here's a 1 2 pitch to Blackman again. And he struck him out on the outside corner. Good work by Kevin Segrist. He strands two, and Wainwright is in line for the victory. And it's time to stretch. Nice work by Kevin Segrist. Cardinals on top. It's 2 0.
part of a double switch. He'll lead off for the Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's our Honda home run inning. Cardinal player hits a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. Two to nothing Cardinals, each team with six hits. Well-pitched game by both starters in this game. Chris Russon for the Rockies and Adam Wainwright. Six and two-thirds innings, six hits, no runs, a walk and five strikeouts. And Gonzalez Herman is first out of the Rockies bullpen. And we saw this bullpen here last night. A number of players, a number of pitchers with good live fastballs. Our first look at Herman in this series. Be Tejada, Carpenter, and Piscotti for the Cardinals. Tejada has not had a chance, Dan, to play very much. You would expect him to be a little rusty, perhaps. Yeah, I know what you mean. She turns on that 93 mile an hour fastball. Well, see if he wasn't rusty, it would have been a <laughs> in Big Mac land. <laughs> so if you're not rusty and you get a pitch to hit, it's supposed to go in Big Mac land. We well, we really haven't seen too much of him, offensively or defensively. He has not really been able to get out there, and unfortunately for him, he got injured when he would have been the prime time guy. I said this a number of times in spring training and after Peralta got hurt they acquired Tejada he looked the part he looked like he belonged on a major league field. But think about how important his injury in an odd way has been to this Cardinals team. I'm not saying it's Bobby Bonilla circa 2001 with Albert Pujols but you found out an awful lot about Aledmus Diaz. He, he had to become the more full time guy. There was a time where Jed Jerko was an, was a choice, but Johnny Peralta. We use the word steady a lot when we talk about his defense. You hit it to him, he's going to catch it. Range is okay, not great, but he's going to catch it. He will stabilize the defense in a lot of ways. William and Catherine. Warner of Briar Hill Farms at Kirkwood, Missouri, enjoying Cardinals baseball tonight. The 2 2 pitch to Tejada. And he hits it out of play. A little surprised that Tommy Pham did not join the club. And the reasoning for John Mosellock and Mike Matheny is that they said, look, he essentially missed what would be the equivalent of, let's say, six to eight weeks potentially of. Facing major league pitchers in spring training with the time that he missed at the beginning of the season. So we want to make sure that when he comes back, he's certainly ready to roll with timing. I understand that reason, and I don't dispute that reason in the mind of the general manager, but I think the further reason is that there is not an obvious choice of somebody that is not performing well on the offensive side for the Cardinals. They've got a lot of production a lot of places the numbers are very good offensively and have been right out of the gate. That's not been the issue. Starting pitching and defense. Certainly need to improve some Cardinals just over 500. If the pitching and defense were better they might be a few games better than that. Plaza Tire Service Fox Tracks. Cardinals a chance to pick up a win for Adam Wainwright here tonight. St. Louis has a team they've been hovering right around that 500 mark. If they win they would be 21 and 19.
One out and nobody on and a no one pitch to Matt Carpenter who has struck out twice. It seems like every other week we talk about lineups in in St. Louis it's what makes the fan base and the, the passion of the fans so great. Every lineup is dissected every single night. And you just wonder when Peralta comes back where does he fit in. Do you want to keep Carpenter in your leadoff spot. At what point does Diaz potentially move up with the type of production he's been providing. I mean these are all questions right now that. You would have to thank Mike Matheny and John Mozeliak and the analytics department. They all take a hard look at. It's almost as if lineup construction has become a sport in and of itself. I think analytics has added to that sport for fans. More savvy about the numbers and what the construction really means. It's not as simple as it used to be. It used to be your fast guys first. Your guy that can hit the ball the other way second. Your best hitters third. Your power hitters fourth. Your other power hitters fifth. And then you got the rest of the guys. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Don't put lefties back to back in your lineup. And, and that's about it. Billy Martin was famous for when his team was struggling. He would put all the names of his team into a hat and just pick them out. And that's where you were hitting. <laughs> just to just to change it up. You know a good example of that we had Chris Duncan in the booth last night and I remember Tony La Russa at any time that he was trying to get a hitter going. Whether or not you are the prototypical number two hitter but if you wanted to get going you front hit in front of, of you hit in front of Albert right. Two balls and two strikes. With one out and nobody on. Good eye again by Carpenter. Three and two the count. The shift is on and the next pitch is in the dirt. So two walks for Carpenter tonight. He's now up to 29. He's in the top 10 in that category. Academy Sports and Outdoor Autograph Nights are coming up. Second of six is Friday night. Two current Cardinals will sign and then former Cardinals will sign for fans of all ages from 615 to 7. For details visit Cardinals.com slash promotions. And if you'd like to get a chance to get an autograph from my partner this weekend, you will be over at the Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum. Is that right? On Saturday, you bet. Look forward to that. I love the Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum. There's a lot of stuff to see. In fact, the times I've been there, every time I leave, I say I need to spend more time and I want to look at that again. And I mean, there's always there's just so much to see and experience there at the museum. Brian Finch and his staff do a great job with that. That's well hit down the left field line. It is hooking and it is a foul ball. Long strike one on Steven Piscotti. Looked like that hit off the top of the wall down there just. Well maybe the front row of seats. You know the uh, the DeWitt family has over twenty two thousand pieces of memorabilia and artifacts. Mm. Of baseball history. I mean, that's incredible. My first reaction to that is somebody had to actually count that. <laughs> I mean, good for them. I'm happy for them. I'm just wondering how do you know that? But started in spring training, they just got done at <laughs> lunch yesterday. Hire a couple of interns. Over twenty two thousand. Not twenty one. Twenty two. It's on the rise. This time next year it might be 24. I don't know. Love the Eddie Goodell jersey that you see displayed over there. The tribute to the minor league system 
so much attention to the Cardinals minor league system and rightfully so. Started by Branch Rickey and the way that they have produced player after player here in recent Cardinal history. Some jerseys from 2011 that went through the shredder. Nick Puto. There's a story with every one of those 22,000 pieces. Yep. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Piscotti. Piscotti, a base hit into left center field. Carpenter rounding second on his way to third. Good arm by Para, and he got him. And Piscotti winds up at second base. We talked about it earlier. Para, a very good defender. Well, Carpenter knows Parr has got a good arm, but he thinks he's got a shot at making it. He rounds second. He looks over his shoulder for that split second and the throw right on the money. Well, you said earlier you never make the first or the third out at third base. He didn't do that. Made the second out. I was listening to you. Here is Holiday who has the two RBIs tonight for the Cardinals. Matt will be part of our speaker series tomorrow. Chance to visit with the Cardinal left fielder for about Half hour 45 minutes looking forward to that. And again you're invited but I know you won't show up. How do you know I'm not there around the corner watching. With some stealth. You told me you were going to get a perm. Here's a 1 0. Wait a minute. This is not the 80s or 70s whenever that was. <laughs> You show up tomorrow with the perp. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to do. I know. Come to expect the unexpected. Three and out. And Holiday looks at a strike. So it's three and one. Critchick. He's on deck. Piscotti at second base. And the 3 1 pitch to the Cardinal left fielder. Gets away. And a runner will advance to third base. That's Piscotti. Plaza Tire Fox Tracks. The Cardinals have runners at the corners with two down. This ball just got away. I don't know whether it's because the catcher Walters was standing up in an odd position but he had a hard time tracking that ball and boxed it a bit. So a pass ball is charged on that play. Walt Weiss the slow walk out from the dugout. And that'll be it for the right hander. With Randall Grigic due to hit when we come back in our Chevy call to the pen.
Sports Midwest after Blues hockey games. Coverage continues Thursday night after game number three. We'll have Cardinals baseball followed by Blues Live and Missouri Lottery Blues Live. Post game show, it's tied up at 1 1. Seeing that blue all over the place around town. Everybody getting behind the St. Louis Blues. Here's Randall Gritchick. Gritchick hits it to short. One pitch, one out, and that sends us to the eighth. Cardinals have the lead. It's 2 0 St. Louis. Chris got the final out back in the top of the seventh. Let's take a look at our Yellowwood bringing the lumber. That was a double for Matt Holiday. Scored two in the only two runs tonight. Jeremy Hazelbaker has taken over in left field. Cardinals have a two run lead. left-handed batters in the original lineup for Walt Weiss. Segrist a natural first guy out of the bullpen especially with as good a start as we had from Adam Wainwright deep into this game. And at some point he'll give way to Trevor Rosenthal. Rosenthal could go more than an inning just as Segrist could at inning plus. But Rosenthal not up yet. Two balls and one strike on Trevor's story. They certainly want Segrist in through Carlos Gonzalez. And then after that, depends on how well he's throwing. Two and two.
Sigrist hides the ball too. He does. It's good long arm action. I think it'd be difficult to pick up his hand. I mean, you, you want to see the ball. Every hitter wants to see the ball. Well, the ball's in the hand. So you've got to, if the hand is being hidden behind you, I mean, you're really looking for that, that spot there. And if the ball is behind you, if your glove is shielding, which some pitchers do with their lead, their lead arm, a glove, you're looking at a glove, you're looking at knees and shoulders and hips and head, and you don't see the ball yet. That's the thing you're trying to hit. It's, it can be tough. Some guys just naturally have that deception. And the reason the hand matters is you, you're looking for the ball, but it's the angle of the hand on the ball, too, which might tell you whether it's a curveball, change up. The best hitters can pick that up quickly from the grip. You don't have to wait till the ball is thrown and say, oh, there's a curveball. That may be too late. Two two pitch. And he got him on the inside corner. Where he struck out Charlie Blackman that same pitch that side of the plate. Fastball grip. Hits his spot. Be interesting for you and Jimmy to get into that from a guy who's as good at reading pitchers as anybody and he was good at pitchers who were tipping things. Yeah. But but even just the natural beyond the tipping part. What you see right there. At that point in the delivery curveball. And Jimmy could say it better but the curveball is going to be the hands different it's it's turned on the ball you see more ball. When a guy has a curveball grip you see the side of the baseball fastball you just see fingers on top you see less of the ball. Because the other fingers are covering it just has a different look change up even different beyond that. You were on the radio side on the road trip, Jimmy. I, I never realized this. We try to find out as much as we can about the players and backgrounds and various things. Jimmy has 2010 vision. I'm not surprised. So we talk about picking up spins, and, and we talked about it off the air. We got into it a little bit during the game. He said, but you know, in terms of, of seeing grips, exactly what you're talking about in the spin of the baseball. I mean, 2010 vision is going to help you out. He just texts me. He knows exactly what you're doing. He's looking at you across from Ballpark Village. That's how good his vision is. There's not a chance because he's probably sleeping. <laughs> However, if Jimmy, you're awake. You probably did see that. <laughs> I think you heard it. <laughs> Here's a one-two. Popped up into shallow right. Who wants it? Oh, it'll be Ruben Tejada. Outfielders playing very deep. So Tejada had to go out and make that catch. Like the ball kind of faded on him a little bit. He almost overran it. I think the one thing you have to like about the Cardinals right now from day one, I mean of spring training, the bullpen. Bullpen overall has been a plus. Sungwano, Segrist. You got a power pitcher in the back end of games with Trevor Rosenthal. Bowman has been a nice surprise. Broxton off to a good start. It's been a strength of the club. First pitch fouled back by Gonzalez. No so question. Two outs and nobody on. No question the bullpen's been a strength. And you know, before it's said and done, you always need help in your bullpen you guys you know you ride the horses for a while and I think Mike Matheny is doing a good job and Derek Lilliquist of making sure you don't override the horse keep him healthy and active so when you need them in August and September and October they've got some bullets left I guess horses don't really have bullets so there goes that analogy.
0 2 pitch. When Seacrest does throw the curveball, it's against a lefty, and they are few and far between. Threw it more in spring training, chance to work on it. There was a lot of excitement about it, but when push comes to shove and you're pitching in the eighth inning, eighth inning of a 2 nothing game, you don't want to experiment. Well, maybe you do. Here it comes. Throw a good one. And it is. Strike out of cargo. As Molina throws a strike to first base. And cargo saying, I didn't know he had one of those. He knows now. Nice job, Seagrass. Right, raise one, two right now. By National Car Rental. Go national, go like a pro. And by your local Volkswagen dealer. There's Yadier Molina. Chad Qualls. Seems like he's been around forever. He has. A lot of good years in the Astros organization in their bullpen, and they had some pretty good bullpens too. Billy Wagner. Yes. Dotel. Yep. Came up with Houston in 2004. Been with Arizona, Tampa Bay, San Diego, Yankees, Pittsburgh, Miami, Houston again, and now with the Rockies. You talk about durability, there's two guys that have made at least 50 appearances in each of the last 11 years. Two guys. Two. Chad Qualls is one of them, Matt Thornton being the other. Moss with a high fly ball lifted out to deep left. Trevor Rosenthal throwing in the Cardinals' pen. There's two outs. Think about the stories this guy is going to have when he's done playing. Sitting out in the bullpen oh, for all yeah. these years. Oh, yeah. You actually came out okay. <laughs> I'm surprised you think that. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. Consider the source. You, you always come out of it wiser. I'd imagine that would be the case. 
two outs nobody on and a lead miss Diaz. A couple been, of hits tonight. It's been a good game. It was an odd first inning. We talked about it at the time. A lot of things could have happened differently but it settled into a. Very close game where. One hit. One gapper. One error could make a difference. So far it's been clean. Since the early going. And the 1 0 pitch. Chopped foul. I'm sure the Rockies want Qualls for his sinker. Keeping the ball down. In Colorado keeping it in the ballpark. Talked earlier about 22,000 mementos. How about that young man down the line there? That that one means as much to him right now, and hopefully will be flipping him the baseball. Here's a 2 2 pitch in the dirt. Three and two the count. And the next to Diaz on a hop to short story gets rid of it just gets a lead miss Diaz. We head to the ninth Trevor Rosenthal comes on when we come back. Rosenthal in to close it out for St. Louis. Well, Trevor's had one blip, and he had that recently on the last road trip where he had trouble throwing strikes, and Seekers picked him up. But he does have seven saves, and he has a little room to work with here in the ninth inning with a 2 0 Cardinal lead.
First man is Mark Reynolds. Fastball at 94. Gomez of the Phillies leading the National League in saves with 15. The Rockies closer, McGee, has 13. Seven for Trevor, not a lot of opportunities. When the Cardinals win, it seems like they win big. Oh, just missed one and two. What you hope for Trevor is that the appearances will be banked for later on in the season when the Cardinals need him more. And you have more close games for him to finish. Reynolds hammers that changeup. Here's a one two pitch. Fastball coming and a ground ball that is oh just foul. Tried the left field line then the right field line. So it's one and two two nothing Cardinals RBI double. By Matt Holiday, difference in this game back in the third. He's showing him everything. Change up, fastball, there's the slider. That was a good slider or cutter, whatever Rosie may be calling it today. Pitchers tend to change their mind on it. It's really the same pitch, but for the most part, it was a pretty good one, too. I would bet that Mark Reynolds heard that fastball. Up here and, and up here. Oh, it sizzled. Yeah. The seams cutting into the wind make a little noise. The 2 2. Casey missed it the first time. Walked him. Good at bad by Reynolds. Tying run comes to the plate. The 11th walk in 12 innings for Trevor Rosenthal. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, you mentioned the, the little blip he had on the recent road trip on the radar for Trevor Rosenthal, and you just hope that doesn't play in the back of his mind here. Human nature. Just hope he forgot about it. So here is Para. That pitch taken high in this crowd a little bit restless. Earlier tonight, Parra had his 75th assist of his career when he threw out Matt Carpenter at third base. 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. We've talked about it a lot. I'm sure some fans are saying, especially if you're a fan of the Rockies, why swing at that pitch? And with the specialization of the game, more times than not, managers will tell you they advise their hitters, even if he's thrown five straight balls. You get a pitch to hit, go for it. If you, if you look at the sampling of what players hit on pitches when they're ahead in the count, the average is 200 points higher. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so much easier to hit when you can guess a zone 
ahead in the count and if it's in that zone swinging at it. If it's first pitch maybe one and oh two and oh three and one hitters on zero and two counts. Don't know the current average but it's about 160. And first pitch you hit about 380 370. I mean it's the numbers don't lie for that. And that's why managers who've seen those numbers. Want their hitters to be aggressive in hitters counts. Carved them up. Strike out for Trevor Rosenthal. There's one away. Late swing on the fastball. Not a good night offensively for Parra. No. 20th strikeout of the year for Trevor Rosenthal. Two years ago, he had the issues with the walks. He ditched the windup, remember, and he went exclusively to working from the stretch. Control a year ago was much better. But I, I just wonder was it better because he was being used so much? The Cardinals were winning game after game. Well, there's a rhythm. Double play can end it. I've always felt that a reliever needs to believe needs to be taught number one then needs to believe number two that keeping sharp is your responsibility. If you pitch five days in a row find a way to be sharp day six. If you don't pitch for two weeks find to be find a way to be sharp on that 15th day. It, there are ways to do that you can throw bullpens you can. You can simulate game like situations while you're throwing a bullpen. You know it's not the same thing, but you convince yourself that it is. And the 1 2 pitch on its way. LeMayu to second. Out there. Double play, and the Cardinals win it. A shutout. Two to nothing. The Cardinals defeat the Rockies in game two. Budweiser player of the game is Adam Wainwright six and two thirds six hits no runs one walk and he struck out five outstanding outing for Adam Wainwright the bullpen finishes it off a very nice win against a team that had won five straight games not easy but a fun game to watch here tonight at Bush Cardinals now 21 and 19 lots to get to on the postgame show Scott Warman Jim Edmonds they're standing by two nothing the final from Bush.